hello YouTube followers I'm about to get on with my build of the next biggest Newman motor this free energy machine is going to upsize and upsize considerably these two prototypes here have 70 by 4 neo magnets in them almost the size of my hand and I seriously cannot separate them um, so these prototypes are going to remain one piece yeah, they're very difficult magnets to work with currently as you see I've got them hooked up unintentionally instead of both being motors I've got one of them running as a generator um, I think primarily what I want to do with this test is the last test for output power I was running the uh, generator into an incandescent globe and I was getting about um, 40 watts 40 watts of power input and the incandescent globe was only putting about 25 watts out so the efficiency was quite low um, that's because these machines need to be built big there's quite a few lessons we've learnt along the way but they, they produce very good torque extremely powerful torque very cheaply you can put an awful lot of pressure on these shafts and it makes very little difference to the input power for example the input power has gone from gone up to nine milliamps and I take my hand off the shaft it wasn't I wasn't squeezing very hard but the power running this like load now and it's only a five watt globe and it's not even all the way on um, but it's running at about 360 volts and seven milliamps so that's it will take three watts a bit, bit under three watts um, but it is you know about three watts of light globe power now the reason why this is better um, is uh, all oh, this is really why I wanted to run the test because I was putting with my previous load test I was putting so much load on it putting a really big powerful light globe on it and uh, and that's not ideal um, because the ideal output for these motors is probably something in the range of about five watts or even a bit less because they are very small so I gave them a load that's more suitable to their size and I wanted to do that before I went on and built the bigger machine the next machine is going to be about ten times the size of this one um, and that should be enough to power some useful household appliances um, of course the expense is quite high the next one's probably going to cost me something in the realm of thousand dollars you will take how you calculate uh, the expense of the magnets which are of course imported from China in a shipping container uh, not too expensive as it turns out these these magnets are quite expensive these ones work out to about seventy seventy five dollars a piece AUD and there's two in each machine um, and the value of the copper in each machine is also about the same it's each machine has about a hundred dollars worth of copper and about hundred and fifty dollars worth of magnets um, the next one, the magnets have cost about $500 and the copper will cost almost about that as well. So, but due to the ex and, and the next one is a lot more efficient in terms of expenditure as well because where these are only 8, eight centimeters across, the next one's going to be about 42 centimeters across, um, thereby creating a huge lever force. Um, and the input power will basically be the same I'm going to tune the input power to be a little higher but it's still going to be turning an enormous magnet so yeah the efficiency is um, the input power should be negligible whereas in this machine the input power is is significant because it's you know when I've got the in when I've got the load really low um, I can I can turn the motor down to about 0.2 of a watt and still be spinning almost that speed uh, as demonstrated in previous videos and still put a fair bit of you know put a re reasonable amount of torque on the shaft um, but and it's, it's not the best generator in the world either yeah but the next version is going to be tuned for ultimate output power uh, we'll be producing large large quantities of torque very big torque in fact um, 
this shaft, when I turn the power off of it, I can't hold it with my hands. Impossible. Cannot, cannot hold the shaft. You know, it's, it's a powerful motor. Um, and the next one's going to have at least a 27 meter shaft on it. And it will very much be doing the same thing. Um, uh, just have bags and bags of torque. So we're going to have some fun with that one. Hope you stay with me for the journey. In terms of the switching, the LED switching is working quite well. Um, the solar panels and the LEDs are creating a perfect isolation for the transistors, for the drive transistors. And I can get the voltage up really as high as I want. Um, there's not a limitation there. Currently at about 360. Just dialed that up to about 500. A bit more brightness there. And yeah, it's got no problem running up to very nearly a thousand. And I should be able to crack that mark without much difficulty as well. But um, we had to find out a way to isolate the transistors. And this LED solar panel combination is very good. I'm not sure it's any better than my previous method of using isolation transformers. That way is a little more expensive and a little more bulky, but both could work ultimately. Um, indeed, the prototype for this switching worked very well too. My uh, my ironically named Dark Tower, which has also got four LEDs and four solar panels in there, but they were just ones from solar lights and LEDs that I had sitting around, so that wasn't very well calculated. These, however, calculated very well. Green LEDs, as I said previously, best ones for the job. And the solar panels will put out up to 300 milliamps at uh, four and a half volts. So I chose them specifically on the internet for their characteristics. Um, and yeah, they're doing beautifully. I, my previous Stark Tower setup, um, I had to pay the price of losing some torque on the motor because the base for the transistors wasn't enough. But, um, but yeah, now this is driving the transistor bases very well. Um, so really, in terms of switching, there's only one option left unexplored, uh, and that's the original and the best. That's commutator switching. Um, so I might have a go at that. I suspect I want fully electronic switching. So one of these methods is going to win out, I suspect, ultimately. But uh, but there's definitely something in commutator switching because I've used relays before, electronic relays, click clack, click clack, click clack. They have RPM limits, um, and those RPM limits might not matter too much with a huge machine. Um, but they produce the best torque. The old click clack relays were the best overall, just no losses whatsoever. Um, this this way you might lose 20%, but. Um, but when you've got a thousand percent for free, twenty percent is not a big deal. Um, and down at very low power levels, a thousand percent is has happened. Um, that's really not a problem. Uh, so, so it will happen and be e even easier to find with a larger machine. The question is, of course, what I want to do with it. I was quite happy when I started this project just to power my computer with it. So if I can power my computer around the clock for free, I would be very pleased with that. That would be a quality outcome. Um, and that would really be the objective. If I can do more than that, fine. But that's the inherent limitation of these machines. You simply can't build them much bigger because you can't get magnets any bigger. So, um, so I'll do this technology, this machine, as good as I can with what's available readily. And then I'll move on to another machine. Uh, the the linear motor. I want to build a big one of those, and the uh, the transformer switching. I know my desk looks absolutely terrible right now. Uh, that's because I've got free energy transformers working on it too, and that'll be the side project that I'm going to keep going for the next um, well, probably for the next year or something. But uh, we're really going to make something of that. Uh, it's coming along well. So the current sitting at uh, after I turn the voltage up, we've got. Almost uh, 11 milliamps, 500 volts, uh, and this meter is wrong. I've had to replace the resistors in it. Um, that's reading 24 milliamps, but I've got that set up to be exactly double of the accurate meter. 
uh, just by putting more resistors in there because the uh, analog meters just kept on blowing. So I had to yeah rebuild those a bit. But um, nothing else to report today. That's all working very well. Pretty pleased with a lot of it. Um, I'll make another video closer to completion uh, when we've cleaned it up a bit eventually. It might happen one of these days. Uh, I suppose my last video I'll actually um, try and have it a bit tidier and uh, try not to overshadow the excellence of the project by the sheer filth surrounding it. But hey, there's a certain genuine note to the whole thing. Can't hurt, right? Well, pretty pleased with all that. So check in later for the next one. I'm going to keep working on it. And uh, just know this is actually really good fun and you should do it too. Bye-bye. Well, this is the inside of the new Newman switching box. Uh, four things for the lamps. Solar panels fit in the top of them. And the LEDs fit in the bottom. These are for isolated switches. So we pulse the LEDs. And we use the pickup current from the solar panel to switch the transistors. Um, transparent box. And I've tested a whole bunch of different LEDs. Uh, red, green, blue, yellow, RGB, UV, and uh, ultraviolet, and IR. And uh, green is the best, by about 20%. Yeah, so the solar efficiency, which is very interesting, actually, for solar panels. They pick up green 20, at least 20% better. In some cases, 40% better. So, I'm going to click back to the footage of it being finished, and show you how it works with the Newman machine. See you back soon. Here's the finishing product. Looks a bit rough, I know, but I made a little box. Give my motor a spin, and off she goes. We have both channels working now. The whole thing is starting to look a bit more like a light show than an alternative energy device. We can slide that underneath the motor and proceed with the tests. Hook up the H-bridge and she's good to go. I'll show you what happens next.